Hey everybody, I'm Tony Visco. Welcome to Painting for Pleasure. What I would like to do today is uh, to talk to you a little bit about uh, what we go through, the process we go through before we actually start to paint. Now I know all of you out there get all excited about painting and we all want to jump right in and we want to do a great piece, but I think what we all have a tendency to do is to grab, we all have a tendency to get a lot of reference material like the piece I have up here or any one of these photographs that we have that we're going to work from and we jump right in and we decide that we're going to copy the painting and that's not what I'd like you to do. One of the most important things for you and I to do is to take a look at our reference material as exactly that, as reference material, not to copy but to use for a good painting. For instance, here's a piece that I shot way back when I was up in Vermont of a Vermont barn. It was an old barn that was there and, and as you can see the top of the barn is cut off and it's just a sort of a close-up of the door area and I'm not too sure whether or not it really would make a good painting as is without putting let's say people in it or without recomposing it a bit. And as you might or might not be able to see, what happens here is, is that this barn uh, actually has a long section to it that comes off to the left, and there's really a long section that comes off to the right as well. And it didn't look good. It's not a good, uh, compositionally it wouldn't make a good painting. So the first thing that we really should start to look at when we start to paint, or start to think about painting, is doing simply a sketch of what we want to paint and use this as reference. So let me just take this off here for a second and we'll put it aside and we'll use this as a reference but what I want to do is I want to bring in a sketch. The sketch is the first thing that we want to do for the barn. You notice what I did with this is that I moved it from this view back so that I had a peak on the barn and the barn actually doesn't have uh, a coupler on it but I put one in and instead of this huge section that comes off the side of the piece I just did a little side shed essentially using the reference material that I have developing this sort of walkway going up into this into the local area where I think I want to create much more interest and then I developed some trees around the barn to help enhance it. Now this is a pencil sketch and it was done simply with a 2B or a 4B pencil and the way I handled it and the way I'd like you to do handle this is the same way is to use your pencil and use your pencil strokes in, uh, it, as you would if you were using a paintbrush. So if I have a barn with barn board that's vertical, I want to stroke, I want to go in and I want to do my sketch vertically. And if this, these doors are at an angle, I want to sketch them at quite a, an angle. And so I want you to take a look at it. your sketch as the first thing that we want to do when we do a nice big color painting. I've taken you through the process of going through and painting this step by step and we can do that but in this particular demo what I'd like to do is take you to the, in, to the, uh, the sketch process first. And then there's another process that we're going to take you through and that is going from a sketch to a value study because a value study is the most important part of this. It's going to tell us whether or not our painting that we are ultimately going to do will be good compositionally and work in terms of value and work in terms of the general shapes of this stuff that we're painting. Now by shapes I mean that generally if you do a value study, a value study is done not as a sketch is done here where you have a lot of different values that are playing for, for this piece but in three steps, a light value, a medium value and a dark value. Before I get to the value study however, I want to talk a little bit more about the sketch. We should all be sketching. You and I should be doing sketch after sketch after sketch. Drawing. Drawing is the most important part of painting. It's the most important part of painting. And if you don't draw, it's very difficult to paint. How many of you understand one point perspective? Two point perspective? Three point perspective? How many of you understand how to develop 
and draw animals, or buildings, architectural structures. There's such a, a variety of what goes on out there that we really have to understand what we're painting so we need to learn how to draw the piece before we paint the piece. Draw the components before we paint the components. This is, a f this is fundamental, quite frankly, to good painting. And I want you to become good painters. I'm here to help where I can. And it's most important when you do sketching to get the general feel and character of the piece that you want to paint. You want to keep it fresh and you want to keep it in energetic. And again, strokes are broad strokes. I don't know if you can sort of take a look at how I handle a lot of this stuff, but I used a broad based pencil, and all I did is I just went in and I moved my pencil around to create the illusion or the characteristic shapes, and you've heard me talk about this before, of this tree structure behind the barn. And this tree structure here behind the barn to enhance the Coppola that's over here, and a couple of little references with regard to some of the limbs that are coming off here and so forth. Now, the, the actual painting that I did here, which I will show you when we're through, is a painting that is a vignette. That is to say, this is all in the center of the, of the actual piece. Um, we want to be able to see inside the barn, but we don't want to see detail inside the barn because it's fairly dark inside the barn with a, with a few exceptions. There's a window in the back side of the barn here that we're looking into and through, and we want to tone that down. But for the sake of this sketch, I kept it nice and light and white so I knew where I was going. So here's the white of my paper. Here's my general sketch. This is a mid-value sketch, roughly, few dark areas in here, 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 up here, and in this area back here where we're not going to see a lot. And again, very important when you're sketching to use the pencil strokes as you would a brush in the direction that you want um, to work with. So if you're dealing with vertical planes, if you're dealing with the barn and you're dealing with vertical planes, then you want to sketch in vertical planes. If you're dealing with horizontal planes, you want to sketch. You want your pencil to move horizontally. Or in a diagonal, depending on whether or not you need that or not. Or in this case where the tree, it moves in a multiple directions. So we see a barn, we see some foliage in front, we see old broken down doors that are, one is leaning up against the, the actual barn itself, one is cocked off, the hinges are off and so forth. Uh, and so we sort of have our sketch and we like what we're dealing with here. So that's the f sketch of the, the, the piece that we're dealing with. So let's, let's go through the process of saying that the next thing that we want to do is a value study. Now, I, unfortunately, I don't have the actual value study with me, but I can show you what I've done with some of these quick sketches in that, in that I did here a value study, but I didn't use black and white. I used a value study of and, and I used a, uh, well, actually, it was burnt sienna that I, that I actually used to do this, uh, which basically means that I did this whole thing in one, one color, burnt sienna. Now, the value here is the light of the paper, and I'm gonna, I'll bring you through another value study so that you can understand, but I want to take you through this one first. Uh, the light of the paper or the white of the paper is your first value. That is white or up to, let's say, 30% of, of the, the blackest or uh, the darkest dark, which would be black. So usually values are in 10 degree in increments. So you, there's sort of, when you take a look at a value chart, you'll see 10 subsequent different values going from white to black. For our purposes right now, we're going to say that white represents zero and black represents 10. Some of the value studies are just the opposite, but for us talking right now, we're going to say white is zero, which is the white of the paper, and 10 is black. So in a value study, we don't want to do a value study any more than three values. We want to do a light value, we want to do a mid value, and we want to do a dark value. So the first set of values, any, anything that you see in your photograph and you can squint to see this. Anything that is white or 10 degrees or 20 degrees or 30 degrees all fall into the light category. So you want to keep it white. 
So let it go, just the white of the paper is all it is. So in other words, if I have a slight tone in my, in my uh, uh, the shingles on the roof, let's just call it white for the sake of a value study. And all of this stuff that's in here, which is basically in our photograph, the slight tones, the 10 degree, we'll keep them white, 10 degree. Anything that's mid value, which is right in all the barn, we're gonna say that's, that's roughly 40%, 50%, or 60% of the, the value. Those are called mid values. So we're gonna keep this all mid value. And the darks are gonna be 70, 80, and 90%, somewhere in that area, in black, but most of the time we stay away from black because usually nothing is really black in nature. I mean, there's a lot of darks that come close, but not generally black. So the dark stuff would be all the inside here and so forth, under here, uh, some of the darks over here in the trees and so forth and so on. Here's a, uh, another one. I mean, these are, these are actually color shots, but here's another one that I did the same way. I did the value study first. You'll see the darks that are in here. Some of them are a little lighter. You get mid values and dark values that are in there. You got a dark value that's under here. You got a dark value that's over here. Dark value that's under the shade of the, uh, of the uh, a door that's leaning up against the uh, barn. So we have, if you think about it, this is all mid value. This is dark value, some mid value in the inside, so you're seeing into the barn, and you know there are things that are in the barn. And all of this stuff here, this, this, some of the tree structure back here, they're light values, you'd normally leave them white when you're doing your value studies, okay? Uh, again, and this, is the, this is another value study that I did in the night. What I did on these is that I was teaching brought them, my students in, and I was teaching them basically to do a value study and then actually paint on top of that value study. It was the reason I did it in, uh, in a sepia tone, or in this case, in a uh, burnt, I used burnt sienna to do that. Nice, bright, brown, red. It's a vibrant color, wonderful color to work with. Uh, but again, the light areas, all of these areas here where the shadow are, you keep them white for your value studies. Or, and, then, and then put your light, light stuff in there. But you just want basically three values, a light value, a, a mid value, and a dark value. Now what does that tell us? What that does is that helps us to determine design in a, uh, uh, a painting. For instance, you can see in terms of value that this, just basic, this light value here is broken up by this mid value. This will give you an example. We've got a light value here broken up by this mid value that's coming up. So I have a, the strength of something that's coming up over here. Mid value over here coming down. Okay, light value over here. This is all light and so forth. And it goes off and it just is washed out. So you've got some dark areas in here, which you have a shadow against this mid value that's a dark value. You've got very dark values inside against some mid values. So what it does is it creates, up, creates some interest. It moves you from light to dark. From, so, and you've heard me talk about working from light to dark a lot of times. Movement, in, in, as opposed to, for instance, all black in here, which gets boring. If you take this and you compare it to this, I left some mid value in here, some light value in here, some dark value in here to create interest. This is boring. It's just all dark. It doesn't have any excitement. It doesn't have any energy. It doesn't have any movement. So you never want to necessarily copy your reference material exactly. You want to interpret it. You want to, you're the artist. You, you want to create something that's interesting. So in an area like this, for instance, where I have a large door, I wanted to create some mid value and some dark value, but I didn't do it up here. I have a window that's cut open, a uh, window, a big hole, quite frankly, without anything on there. It's where the, probably the hay would be taken in in the barn, something like that, and put up top. Uh, but anyway, it's just all dark. I don't want you to go there. I want you to go here. I want you to go into the painting, and I want you to say, let's stay right in this area. Let's play in here. So that's set up very intricately so that what we want to do is drive our audience to look where we want them to look. So again, from a sketch, which determines what you want to do, to a value study, which you should do before you paint, 
And then we can get into the final painting. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to pick this up because the final painting has glass on it and you may get a bit of a glare and I'm going to sort of hold this up here, but this will give you an example of the, the painting itself. Um, again, I have some excitement in here in terms of lights and mid values, but mostly darks. Changed it up a bit and I've changed it around. Now, in this case, the final painting, what I did is I, I eliminated the, the coupler on top here and I put some trees behind here and I held this all within a circle. You notice what I did is I've got this sort of circle area over here to help focus you in and I broke that circle with a, my band of trees that are next to it and these dark areas right here, you'll notice is the dark against the light, this dark against the light, this mid value to dark against the light. You've always heard me say that, movement in color, dark against light, warm to cool, you'll notice that my warm tones and so forth are over here. And these actually, when you're dealing with browns, you're dealing with warmer tones, but this happens to be a little bit warm here. And then as I get into this yellow, believe it or not, even though it's yellow, it cools, it cools as it goes in this direction. Now, that, that, you know, there may be a, a problem in your mind and you're saying, well, yellow has, is a warm color. Yes, yellow is a warm color, but yellow can be against other colors, cool, depending on what yellows you use. So you've got to be careful about that. And it's always in relationship to what other colors are in your painting. Now, the reason I wanted you to talk to you about value painting, and usually working with value painting means black, like a lamp black, working in black and white. Use lamp black, use uh, neutral tint. Uh, any of your blacks will, will work beautifully as watercolor or oil or acrylics. You can do the same thing in either, all painting styles. Black and white gives us the definition and eliminates all of the intricacies that take our eye away from the basic shape. So now that we're into the color, I wanted to focus a little bit more and help not bring your eye off here. So I brought everything into the center. I got the sky and I got the sort of circle back here. This is called a vignette and I'm supporting this barn by the tree stand here, the tree stand here, and you're still being able to, your, your primary goal is to focus into the center of this piece here as you see it. So again, these steps are critical. I'm gonna take you through another one, another set, so you understand a little bit more. This time I'm gonna take you through the sketch and the black and white value, and then into the color piece. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna move this off. Hang on, well, here, I'll tell you what. I'll leave that there for some interest. Let me get my sketch, and then we'll start with the, we'll start with the basic sketch and work from there, because it has that. Okay, so let's do this. Here's my sketch. What this is, is a sketch of a stone archway somewhere in Europe. Um, it happens to be that the sketch, and I took it from a photograph, which I don't have with me, by the way, here, but I took it from a photograph of a, of a book that I have uh, of an area called Cicciaria over, uh, over in Italy. And uh, this is Ferentino, and it's, uh, and it's, a, uh, it's called the uh, Porta Maiora. Uh, maybe I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but in any event, we got this stone arch into another stone arch and stuff that's going on behind it uh, and we got some <clears throat> we got some new buildings that are up here and I sort of sketched it out and this, the photograph ended right here but I'm gonna you'll see my final painting I actually extended that beyond when I get to the final painting um, and I did a few other things in the final piece but the idea again with a sketch is to get a feeling of the piece and how we want to handle it. And I wanted to focus your attention, your eye, into this area right here, these stone arches. These were very interesting. The other thing I wanted to do, and you'll see this in my value sketches, I kept this very simple in terms of my three values. I not only wanted you to force your eye into this area, but I didn't want to actually necessarily draw or paint every stone. That's another thing that we get involved in. We feel as though we need to draw everything that's on our reference material. We're, we're gonna copy the reference material, so therefore we have to draw every stone, every brick, 
every window. You don't need to do that in painting because you when you do that, you actually lose the ability to focus someone's eye, your audience, when they look at your painting, to where you want them to go. Because they get lost in the intricacies of all of this little, all of the stuff that's going on, all of the bricks that you're drawing, all of the stones that you're drawing, all of the grass blades that you're drawing. It, it's totally unnecessary. You want them to focus on here and you want, a, you want them to get a feeling, or you want them to understand that it is stonework, but you don't want to get into the intricacies of the stone. That's not where you want to drive your audience. You want them to go under the arch, somewhere beyond here. And you want to do that with value. So you notice when I sketch this, the arch itself is mid-value. The paper around it, obviously, is all your white. And your light values are going to be all of the stuff that's down here. The arch itself, under the arch, is very dark. And actually, you can't determine from this arch, arch here, under here that's dark, to what's going on back here or what's going on back here because it's all relatively the same value. All I'm concerned with is this basic shape and how to get someone's eye into this area. This is a shadow underneath the arch for this one right here. It's coming across and you want to tie all this thing, to, all this together. So you've got this shadow area that's dark, this sort of tree that's coming up here that's dark, something that's going on over here and something that's going on over here in this area right here. These were all buildings. Actually, it was an interesting old arch, and then there was this formal or new building that was up here. Didn't like that, so I left it all uh, just to, to your imagination. Uh, but anyway, the idea is also to drive somebody into the arch by direction. So you'll notice what happens here is that I have my drawing, and I've got these little arrows or little lines that are coming into the, into the piece, and I thought that would be a great way to get directional, to get people to move into the piece or underneath the archway and get interested in the stonework. Now this is a little thing that's down here. It's a little secondary feature. And this is a secondary character. My primary character is right here. This is, the, this is our feature player, I guess, is if you want to talk about uh, a theatrical presence and somebody on stage. We've got a feature player. Everything around it is secondary. So this is where I'm lit, dark against the lightest light, driving people right here to see this, and all of the stuff around here becomes secondary. So I got excited about the sketch, and I said, Jesus, a sketch would make a nice painting. Uh, let's, let's go and draw. Uh, let's put together a value study to see how that will work. So the next thing I'm going to show you is that particular value study. So what I've done is I've brought it from the sketch phase, and you'll, you'll have to adjust the camera a little bit on this maybe, but. But let me, uh, and, if, and if this is bending forward, I may have to pin this. I will do that with a little bit of tape so that it doesn't arch for you, so that you can see it a little bit better. Let me put this little piece of tape up here to hold it against that a little flatter. So all this is is a value study. Remember what I told you a little while ago? Three values. A light value, which is my paper. And in this case, what I did is I did not use white for my watercolor paper or my sketch paper. This actually is paper that has a tone to it. But that's my lightest light. My mid values are all in here. This, this area back here, mid value in here, mid values up here, a little bit of mid value over here. Some mid values that are on the arch itself, a lot of light on the arch. Some mid values back here, and then dark values. Look at these strong darks that are up here, this here, the tree that's over here, the arch, nice and strong. This dark area that's back here that leads into this arch that's down here. And look at the direction I made instead of a vertical, because my original sketch was vertical, I made a horizontal drawing out of this, a horizontal uh, value study. Look at the long lines now, the directional lines that are coming in here that are taking you into this piece. This is absolutely great because I have direction coming in. That is made up of mid values and dark values because I went light value and everything here is light. All right. And you know that what's happening here is this is stone by virtue of just dropping in a few darks and a few light, a few mid values. I've got trees up here and something else that's going on here. And I killed 
the building that was a new modern building, got rid of it and said, let's just put some trees in here and maybe some, maybe some a church steeple back here or something else that's going back in this area and so forth. And I'll put this tree in for support and I'll do something over here. This is a dark area against a stone. Uh, so it sort of looks like I've got this sort of castle thing going on over here with this stone arch coming out of it and another stone arch underneath it. And then something going back, because notice I lightened this up here, dark against my lightest light, light against my darkest dark, right? Mid values all driving down to these light areas. The arch is the most important thing, primary subject, primary character. And these are nothing more than characteristic shapes of this stoned arch and what's going on over here, this, this, this movement going up and all of this is going to be stone. So it becomes interesting and you can see it as shapes, not detailed as to what it is, but as basic shapes. This wonderful arch that's going on here, this dramatic stone uh, facade that's here, this wall that's coming out, oh, down this way, that's probably stone as well, but with direction going into the piece itself. So you know you're walking in here, and this becomes a roadway. Notice I did a little bit of mid-value over here, some dark value over here, my shadow I brought across over here. Tells us a story. Says the design is either good or bad, okay, from basic shapes. Now remember also, and I know I didn't tell you this in the past, but I'm going to tell it to you now. You need, when you're dealing with mid-values, light values, and dark values, a dominant value. A dominant value is a value that is going to be more dominant than the other values that are in there. And maybe I need to say it another way, because you, obviously you're, the strength of this is the dark values, and that's where you're going. But this painting is predominantly mid-value or light value with very little dark. So you have a relationship that's more light than dark, more mid-value or more light value than dark value or mid-value in this case. You've got all of this here is light, got a few mid-values, and then, uh, then you're stepping down into dark values. Now the dark values are very dominant in that they force your eye into the piece, but the overall painting is actually lighter than it is dark. So this tells you a story. It says you're going down the right direction or you want to change directions. You want to go off in another direction. Interestingly enough, it's a piece that I think will work as a painting. So let's do a painting. Okay, so what I've done is I've done a painting for that and I brought this into this kind of painting. All right, now I was very much influenced by this movement and what was going on down here, and now I can throw color into it. Interestingly enough, as long as you keep your colors the same value, you'll get the same impact. So it's a rough sketch, and I'll probably do from here maybe my final painting at some point, but this is an exciting little piece. What I did is I got rid of all of the stuff that was up here, threw some steeples back here, like old churches that are in the back area, the monastery or something like that that's going on back there. And I handled this extremely loose. I didn't tighten up on this at all. This is a very loose painting. And the painting suggests that you want to go into this area right here. These strong docks under here, this arch over here, this arch is a little bit different in that I I made this arch right here, the dominant arch, which is a white or light arch. And then this arch here was mid-value, and then this is dark back in this area right here. So these darks up here help to reinforce this light that's over here. This is something, now you may say, what is this? I don't know, I mean, I was screwing around and playing around with, with whether or not I should put that tree in there or not, and I just, threw some color in there and it's dark enough to, and I just let it go actually, this is all wet, because I did this as a wet into wet, so normally I would, I wet my sky and I allowed all of this stuff to play down into it, so it works out pretty good. But I think that this gives you a, a mechanism or a tool to use to get to your final painting. These are steps that you take. Trust me on this, I've been painting for a long time and um, 
the best approach to this is not to just jump right into a painting and copy your reference material exactly, but to get into this kind of stuff here, where you're getting into your actual painting after you do your value study and then after you do your sketch. So those are the steps that you want to take when you do this. I want to also just take you through one other real quick thing, and that is when you're doing, when you're doing value studies, and, and I'm, off, I'm off camera right now, um, and you're doing sketches and you're doing paintings and so forth, again, here's a, here's a real quick one. Now, I actually have, I took this from some reference material, but this will give you an idea, and I don't know if you can see that, but this is give, it's going to give you an idea of going, going, now, going from this value study here, which is, again, a value study of a barn, but when you get to putting this on your watercolor paper after you do your value studies, and this is a sketch value study, you don't want to get into drawing detail on watercolor paper or on your, when you first sketch it down or do on your canvas if you're doing an oil uh, or an acrylic that, for that matter. What you're doing is you're just outlining. You're roughly outlining the area that you want to put your stuff into. Now in the case of watercolor, I use that as reference. I'm not going to follow it exactly necessarily, but it's a reference as to where I want my basic shape to be. But this gives you an idea again of sketching and very vertically going into the side of the barn and creating the interesting barn, uh, side, side barn where, where maybe there's cracks in the siding and so forth. And this gives you the feeling under here that I'm going to have some stonework under here. My fence is going in as a directional process here. And all of this in the back supports the barn. Light against dark. Dark against mid-value. So you can see something like this. And then the final painting on this one here, or the piece that I did, gives me something more like this that I can work with where I've got a piece that I'm finished off. I finished off, um, and again, this is not necessarily finished to the point where I would, I would finish a final painting, but again, it gives, gives me the general feeling of what's happening. Heavy shadow under here, because light's coming down on top of it. <clears throat> my dark against my mid-value, my dark over here supporting the side of this barn against my lattice life, which is my roof, um, and just putting this making sure that this is dark on the other side, and stepping this in, by the way, on, over on this side here, so that you know that this is sitting out underneath. It's an overhang. This whole barn is an overhang. So it gives you some idea as to how we want to go. Sketch first, value study, study second, final painting on the last leg. So to give you that general feeling, um, We'll talk a little bit now about what we can do in terms of sketching. So I'm just going to take you through a couple of these sketches, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, as I said to you, when, we're out, when I'm out and I'm looking around at what I want to, when I want to draw a paint, or finally, I do things like this. Here's just a little coastal scene, again, sketched out so that you can see across the marsh. Uh, flats over here. This happened to be up in Hingham. Uh, and the actual land mass, this is probably downtown. It's, it's in the other side where all, of the, where all of the boats are moored and so forth. And uh, this is coming out of Crows Point, if you know the area. And then this was actually homes that were over here, but I changed that up in my original photograph that I took as a, as a reference material and decided that I want to make this sort of hill of, of leafy things and, and foliage and rocks and everything else as it comes down. So it gives you some idea as to my sketch. And I would go from here and I would do a value painting first to do that. Here's another real quick sketch that I was doing out there and I decided to put the, a home up in the hill and just bring this down. These are just, these are, these are the private guys. This, this is the stuff that you do uh, before you actually start to paint. Uh, still life. I think I did this still life a long time ago, um, you know, as part of a demo. Maybe not here, but I know I did it in a class environment. But it just gives you the feeling of a dark apple, let's say, against the light of the uh, pear that's, that's sitting in front of it. Um, you know, these quick things like this, still life. I don't know if you can see that at all, but, th you know, just material, still life, when we set up a still life, and you guys that like to do still life, 
you start with this stuff. It gets a little bit complicated. You get a lot of fruit, glass, copper uh, in, in uh, bottles and so forth and so on. So those are the kinds of things that you do before you get into a situation where you're painting. Um, again, roughly a stone bridge. Okay, water going under that bridge. A couple of support trees over here. You don't want, you know, you got this sort of bridge that's coming across here that all has the same value. It's mid value. Got some dark rocks that are in here. But you've got a tree, a strong focal point here that's holding you from going off the page that way. And you've got a series of trees. You've got a couple of figures up here that are playing around that are in this area. So you want to make sure that your audience stays right in this area uh, when you're doing that. We've actually done paintings of this stuff in the past. In the past. Uh, I'm just going to take you through a couple more and then we're going to just wrap this up. Okay, and this is, a, this is a little bit tougher to see probably because this is the danger, now, this is the danger you get into when you have uh, equal amounts of light and dark, okay? So I have, I have a sketch that I was doing and this is a waterfall that's over here. It's going to be hard for you to see this, but what you've got is some dark rocks that are over here, a white waterfall, some mid-value stuff that's going on over here. But the relationships are too close for you to identify. And I'm showing you this because I want you to understand that it doesn't all come out, you know, wonderful when you, when you sit down and doing this. Gives me the presence. I'd probably do another sketch first before I do a value study on this and get this tone a little bit darker so that it, this waterway stands out a bit more and uh, define this a little bit more so that it's not as tough to see. But these are rocks, waterfall, some overhanging branches that are up here, and the waterway that comes down here with, with, a, with a rock in this area right here. Uh, but it gives you the feeling, generally, of what I want. I'd go through a second sketch before I would do a value study. Look at that. I mean, this, this is just forcing somebody underneath this bridge. This arch over here, a couple of figures that are over here. You know, the actual photograph was an old bridge. Uh, actually, it's not an old bridge. It's a, yeah, I guess it is an old bridge. It's been around for a while. It's down in Plymouth. Um, and it uh, has no character to it at all, except that it was just flat. And so I would do that painting, and I would do this very dark under here and make this all rusted. I'd, I'd probably do something so that it, the final piece has some crap coming down or all kinds of garbage and rusted, uh, you know, out the water dripping down off the top of that bridge. But anyway, it's Eel River, or it's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's coming up from the marina down here into Brewster Garden, past Brewster Garden, and up into the, uh, the area that, uh, where the fish spawn. But again, rough idea, rough sketches, sketch first. Very important that you sketch first, uh, and then get into your value studies and go from there. So just a word about what we're all about. We're about painting, but before we paint, we need to draw and we need to sketch. Very important, and then do value studies in order to get the general shapes that we want before we get into anything else. So I'm your host, Tony Visco. I'm happy to be here with you. Hopefully this will work out. A little different, I decided to bring this up because I think it's necessary. I've got a lot of students, and I've heard from a lot of you people out there, and unfortunately, a lot of you people do not draw before you want to paint. So I'd like you to be able to get in there and start sketching. Simple pencil sketching, graphite, charcoal, whatever. Get in there and start sketching what you want to paint, then do some value studies, and then get into painting. So with that, I'm going to leave you here. Just want to let you know that you can go to my website, um, www.panthonyvisco.com and you can see a couple of hundred pieces that I have up online. I've got some starting to upload some sketches up there too so that you can get to see some of those. Um, also, you can like me on Facebook. It's Visco, V-I-S-C-O, Fine Art, F-I-N-E-A-R-T. Uh, so it's facebook.com forward slash Visco Fine Art. You can like me on Facebook. Uh, appreciate that. Or you can give me a call, 617-823-0860, anytime you want to talk to me about this stuff. Happy to do it. And the other thing is, is that I do teach down at the Plymouth Center for the Arts. 
Um, so you can call the Plymouth Center of the Arts on 11 North Street in Plymouth anytime and uh, talk about maybe uh, coming down and working with me for a session or two. Okay, so that being said, happy to be with you. Until I, next time, thanks a lot for being here, Painting for Pleasure. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>